is basically what we say is GERD is reflux of the gastric acid into the esophagus which is called gastroesophageal reflux disease and it's a disease of the lifestyle as well also because of the laxity of the lower esophageal sphincter. It is increasing because our lifestyles have changed, we have become more sedentary and our diet patterns are also changed to the junk food and lot of cola drinks and, uh, and so on. And normally, you know, we don't have any specific treatment or medicine which will tighten the sphincter, but we have the medicines which will reduce the acid and cause less symptoms. But with increasing incidence of GERD, same way now we are getting refractory GERD, that the sphere GERD does not respond to the regular proton pump inhibitors, which is the drug of choice for that. And it is in this particular thing, we are following the West, that the West, this disease has been rampant for many years. And in India now we are becoming more and more conscious and we are seeing more and more in our day-to-day -day practice. The drug of choice for GERD today is a proton pump inhibitor which reduces the acid to a significant level. This is the, till date, this is the best drug because it improves symptoms, it causes healing of esophagitis and it improves quality of life. But then no treatment is the ultimate and we have some deficiencies or un so called unmet needs and these are that it, it takes some time for its action to start after taking the medicine because the drug has to be activated and it has a limited duration of action so quite often the patients when they're given this medicine for once a day they get up in the middle of the night with the reflux symptoms that is called night breakthrough same way this medicine have to be taken empty stomach when the proton pumps are most active so, the, uh, so that it can act on them. So the compliance of that, that is taking at the right time before breakfast is very poor across the world. Patients don't stick to that regime. And because of its specific metabolism by particular enzymes from the liver, it has lot of drug to drug interactions and also the metabolism differs from individual to individual. The another important issue that we have is that because of the changing drug resistant to the H. pylori bacteria, drug resistance becoming a major problem for H. pylori treatment, lot of PPS combinations do not act on that. Our resistant rate is going up and up. And of course, the last point that I like to mention that because this is the disease which requires long-term treatment and long-term treatment of proton pump inhibitors has been reported to have significant side effects which are becoming more and more noticeable over the last 10 years. Of course, they are still safe in the patients which require them and these are the drugs of choice but we have to be cautious about the side effects. That's a wonderful question because we have on the horizon rather we have been recently marketed even in India though this drug has been in use in Japan for almost uh, 9 to 10 years and this is a group of drugs called the PCAPs that is the uh, the other channel for the acid secretion where they work and in these PCAP groups and the molecule which is introduced in the Indian market is one parasol. Now it does not require activation so it has a quick onset of action and for the same reason it does not need to be given necessarily empty stomach. It can be taken even after food. It has a prolonged action so night breakthroughs are less or more, less likely to happen or don't happen. At the same time it does not have significant drug to drug interactions and at the whatever the limited data we have it is probably more effective against h pylori and only a combination of two drugs rather than four drugs that we use for ppi and over one week 
it is giving a better results in eradicating h pylori than the regular proton pump inhibitors and in my view that is probably one of the most important actions and these molecules has been this molecules have been shown to act on the refractory gerd if you look at the you know in medical language we divide gerd gastroesophageal reflux disease into a b c d c and d are the ones which respond very poorly to ppis but there is a good data to show that these molecules work on those conditions also